Welcome back to Reform the LA Way. And joining us now is former Congressman Esteban Torres. Welcome, Congressman. Thank you. Now, Monica, can you please establish for our viewing audience the role that the Congressman has played in some of the reform uh, uh, changes and issues Absolutely. that are going on in LUSD? Yes, thanks. Thank you for being with us, Congressman. Oh, my pleasure. When Thank I look you. at you, I think about uh, the accolades to LAUSD for getting it right. You are a Garfield grad yes. who went on to be a leader in our community, in this country. I know you told me a story that your interns were the likes of Hilda Solis and Gloria Molina, but then you came back to help the East Side open up its new high school, the first new high school in 85 years. Tell us about that experience. Well, uh, to be sure, I was I was honored, you know, that that a community would choose me to name me for a new high school, especially a pilot school that was so interesting, so exciting to hear about this, and they. The, the group that, that, that uh, approached me on this showed me the site, a tremendous 13 acres in the east side, right around where I was raised, that this would be a, 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 a monumental edifice for the children of, of that community. Yes, named okay. after. Named after me. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Congressman, let me ask yes. this. You obviously have tremendous history, not only with, with the community, but with LA Unified, and now you've got a school in, in, in your honor. What, in your estimation, are, are the major changes you've seen from, you know, you, back when you graduated and, and first uh, uh, were part of LA Unified to, to now and with this new school and the pilot program that you see? Well, obviously, uh, when I graduated some 60 years ago from Garfield High School, uh, it was tough going. You know, I was a, a kid that really didn't understand what uh, they were trying to teach me. Uh, there was a lot of confusion on my part. I wanted to do certain things and and i wasn't getting the opportunity to do that in fact i i even harbored the notion that someday i might drop out because i i just wasn't getting the counseling and i wasn't getting cooperation from teachers but eventually one teacher one teacher took me under his wing and said look you gotta you gotta stand up do this do that i will help you i will help you stay in school i'll get you on a class that you want my class he said I wanted to be in this class. And that man helped me to understand how I could stand up for myself and, and work as a student and go on to higher education. It's shocking. It sounds like things haven't changed in 60 years, which is, you know, yes. I mean, yeah. it usually takes that one teacher for that student who's on the border. And I think what you're talking about is our strategy today, personalization. Exactly. Let us build quality relationships with students. Tell us, Congressman, why did you get involved with education on the east side after such a distinguished mm -hmm. career? Well, because I, I've always, I, I wanted to be a teacher initially. I trained as a teacher. I went to East LA College. I went to Cal State, Los Angeles. I wanted to be a teacher. My, my dream of being a teacher was, inter and I wanted to be a teacher because of what a teacher did for me. And I figured if, if, if I can be a teacher, look how many other people I can impact on. But that whole career was interrupted when I was asked to consider becoming a union representative on the job where I was at. And I kind of weighed, uh, should I continue my schooling or should I take this opportunity? Everything I've done in my life has been a matter of risks. You know? And I took a risk and I said, well, I will postpone the education part and I'll take this job because I had a growing family, I needed the income. And so I became a, an international representative for the Auto Workers Union. Mm -hmm. And that really started me on my way to understand the nature of politics and how politics can impact uh, the sense of our economy, our lifestyle, our, how, how this country can prosper and has prospered and has built a middle class by being in a leadership position. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I've always dreamed of coming back to be a teacher. And uh, I fashion myself of being a teacher. I've done many things in my life, in the labor movement, in the diplomatic corps, or as a member of Congress, where I like to get on the chalkboard and draw and, 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 and bring attention to the issues, whether it's trade policy, foreign policy, whether it's education, whatever the subject, I feel I'm a teacher. I feel I'm a teacher. I, I haven't lost that hope. 
We need that hope, Congressman. Uh, you know, we're working real hard at LAUSD to increase graduation. I what know. would you say to our students? Most who are challenged, because like our families, working class families, first generation families, what would you say to them to help them see that other side of possibility? Well, I always like to use myself as an example, you know, that, that I wasn't trying perhaps as hard because I didn't have the support I think that's different now. I, I see that happening in our schools. I, I'm, I want to uh, echo what you've said here today about the energy that teachers are bringing forth, that the, that the school district, how you're working with the parents and the teachers and the students, this, this issue of autonomy, of, of governance. This is all different. This has never happened before. And, and I would tell students that they can achieve the things that I achieved just simply by understanding what they're doing, working at it, standing up for themselves, dealing with the world around them. You know, deal with the issues that, that impact on you as citizens and someday go on to become greater and bigger things. But let me jump in there, Congressman, because yeah. one of the things I wanna make sure that we hear from you is, you've got this perspective that's rather unique. You've served as a U.S. representative to the U.N. in a body that actually deals specifically with, with education at, exactly. at a global level. So how do you see, I don't want to just say the challenges faced by our students here, you know, in, in LAUSD and perhaps nationally, but also the opportunities that perhaps may, may exist for them having the perspective that you've had at that level. Well, that's, that's what I mean when I, when I tell them that they have to really strive to to, to move out into the world. I think one of the greatest things I tell students is, I believe the, the, the greatest effort they can make in their life is being a public servant, serving the public. That's what I've done. That's how I feel that I've been able to, to change things, either as a, as, a, as a representative in Congress or as a UN ambassador. I've been able to change things because I was a public servant. I knew I had to serve and, and provide and and produce and the UN system helped me do that I, I, I understood that I was a, a, a United States ambassador to the UNESCO agency in Paris France I served there working with other ambassadors from all kinds but from all nations from many nations of the world working on on educational standards and how those had to be applied to their nations and our own country on scientific matters on cultural questions this is this is a world of learning and students can apply themselves that way. And from your perspective, I mean, do you feel that the path that our students are, are going through or the, that they're on is a path that's leading them towards that goal? I feel that way now. I, I see the students at, at the pilot school, at uh, Stephen Torres High School. They're full of energy. They're excited. They want to learn. They, they want to move on. And I, and I just feel so proud when I stand before them and tell them how it can be done. And, and, and they, they cheer me on. Well, I have to imagine it's got to be a real treat to be at a school where you actually get to meet the person it was it was named <laughs> after. You know, if, uh, and if you still went alive. to right, exactly. I mean, if you went to Garfield, uh, you know, I, I know you graduated a while ago, but I'm sure you didn't get to meet Garfield himself. That's so. right. That's right. Go ahead, Monica. So I, I'm remembering the day that we cut the ribbon and we put a time capsule. That's right. And so I think about Garfield when you graduated and. 2011 today the the graduates are faced with some of the same challenges feeling like they need inspiration they're relying on their teachers they're struggling mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking what do you see 50 years from now when they uh, the class of 2061 well I think what I'm seeing today the, the the new approach the reform that you talk about I see that as having a tremendous impact for the future of these students 50 years from now, 60 years when they open that time capsule, I believe that we will have students of a high caliber, really high caliber kids. I foresee that the, the children, the students going to Esteban E. Torres High School and other schools within the system are going to be graduating, are going to be college ready, are going to be the future professionals of tomorrow. That's beautiful. They're going to be. Absolutely. That's why we have to get to 100% graduation. Absolutely. That's why we can't stop. We're very proud of what we've done, but we know so much more has to be done. So Reform the LA Way has roots. Thank you, Congressman, for being with us. Thank, thank you. you, Jorge. Uh, thank you all for being with us.
To create the best educational opportunities for our students requires all of us. If you want to learn more about the reforms taking place in our district or contact me, visit LAUSD.net. I'm Monica Garcia. Together, we will reform education and make LAUSD the best school district for all.